Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Content Mix. I'm Carlota Pico, your host for today's show, and I'm excited to introduce Fabio Pyer, who is EMEA Senior Marketing Manager at Morningstar, and he also leads Morningstar's Diversity and Inclusion Program. Welcome, Fabio, and thank you so much for joining us today on The Content Mix. It's my absolute pleasure, Carlota. Thank you for having me. The pleasure is mine, Fabio. Okay, so let's jump straight into the interview. Could you tell me a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a bit of a wild and probably uncommon way to get into marketing. Um, But yeah, let me give you my background. So I started my career back then in Switzerland by taking on an entry-level role uh, in the estate management uh, business, really, which I did for three years. And it was the perfect uh, basis to really start my career in the commercial and corporate space, really. Uh, I've never really a career path uh, that I wanted to pursue. Uh, So by the time, after like three years, I felt like... Like uh, marketing is the thing everyone is currently speaking about. So that could be something interesting as I considered myself creative and, you know, uh, uh, international uh, minded. I was like, let's give it a try. So I was lucky enough to um, get a fixed term contract for a half a year at a pharmaceutical company in Switzerland where I could make some terrific marketing experience, really, uh, organizing international events, uh, traveling, meeting people from all over the world. And that was really the first time I uh, uh, had the chance to send uh, marketing air, really. Uh, financial crisis hit. I uh, couldn't stay at the company and took the opportunity to uh, get some sales experience. So two years, I was uh, heading uh, the uh, uh, account management, key account management business uh, of another company uh, in the in the pharmaceutical space in Switzerland. Great experience, especially as a marketer. I feel like you have to know how sales works and how they think. Uh, but I always had that marketing thing in the back of my mind and I wanted to go back uh, because I, I knew that is uh, the area I love. Uh, and that's how I ended up in the financial industry, really, uh, by uh, applying for a role at, a, at an insurance brokerage company in Zurich. Um, where I uh, had the opportunity to start as a marketing assistant. And fairly quickly, uh, they gave me the responsibility and opportunity to take on the lead uh, of uh, their Swiss uh, marketing approach, uh, which I was uh, blown away by, uh, considering I was in the age of 22, 23. I was absolutely excited to have this opportunity, really. Um, yeah, and that's when I started to uh, get an interest in, uh, you know, working internationally. Uh, and I was keen to move to London. I always loved London. And I had the opportunity internally uh, to come and join the international headquarters of that insurance broker in, in London. Uh, got some wonderful experience there. Worked there for many years uh, before I was kind of keen to go back home, back to Switzerland. But I had a wonderful um, job opportunity coming up at the Morningstar uh, at the Morningstar company uh, uh, where I currently work, um, but in Frankfurt, not in London, not in Switzerland. So I never worked in Germany, um, but I thought it might be an interesting market, especially given that it's a financial hub in Europe. And I always liked and enjoyed my time working in the financial industry. So my path led to Frankfurt um, instead of back home to Switzerland, where I spent fantastic fifteen months. Uh, driving the marketing approach for Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, before another internal role then came up, uh, the role of uh, NEMIA, demand generation marketing manager based at our London headquarters. And again, I'm back in London now. (laughs) So sorry, that was a long-winded answer. (laughs) What an exciting story though, Fabio. So you went from the real estate industry into pharmaceuticals, then into sales, and now into the financial services. Okay. Absolutely. Could you zoom into some of your proudest marketing moments to date? Yeah, no, absolutely. And there were quite a few. So obviously what I just touched on, um, having the opportunity to taking on the Swiss lead uh, of a marketing approach of such a big corporate company uh, in such a young age is something, uh, you know, I'm very proud of. Um, But there are also, you know, minor achievements, smaller achievements like, you know, what makes me always proud is when you start in a new role and, you know, you can um, build trust and, um, you know, uh, uh, and uh, a relationship really with 
senior leadership and sales. So often in the past, marketing was considered as, you know, those team that makes the PowerPoint presentation look nice, right? Uh, or those that are organizing the event, uh, but really making, especially in a more conservative financial industry, making your stakeholders aware of um, what marketing actually is empowered and capable to do, really, to support the pipeline and, uh, you know, uh, to, to influence revenue, really, uh, and making stakeholders around you understand this value uh, and build this trust, I think, you know, that's what uh, always makes me proud when I achieve that uh, within a new company. Okay. I totally agree with you. The impact that sales has just in the marketing department and how important it is to, of course, know about sales because at the end of the day, we don't do just PowerPoint presentations for fun. Everything that we do is linked back to a business objective. And I think that's so important for a marketeer to understand. I totally agree. Okay. What about some of your biggest challenges? Because it's not always sunny out there, right? We do oftentimes have to go through a lot of challenges that eventually take us to where we are today. I couldn't agree more. And I think uh, challenges are always such wonderful learning opportunities, growth opportunities, really. Um, I I mean, I could uh, name a few, but maybe to pick one, it's a bit of a funny one. So, um, I, as mentioned before, I worked at these international headquarters in London and uh, my path uh, led me to Frankfurt in a small local office uh, where people didn't really have this, uh, you know, uh, uh, marketing mindset and how marketing can contribute to the business. Um, so um, with my with my with my background, with my knowledge uh, uh, in marketing, um, I was keen to, you know, to take their approach to the next level. Um, so what I did was introducing a social media uh, and 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 video uh, content strategy, and literally all the stakeholders didn't understand the value of it. They questioned it. Uh, they, they, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to contribute to it. So it took me a lot of conversations, uh, a, a lot of proving um, why it's working, why this is the, the marketing of nowadays uh, world. Um, putting emphasis on the fact that video content is the source, the way content gets com- uh, consumed the most in nowadays world, making them understand all this you know and proving it with figures stats performance maybe even leads um, that have been created um, through video content or social media content uh, made them ultimately understand uh, and that was definitely one of my of my biggest challenges uh, in a new role (laughs) okay very interesting spinning off of that response do you have any tips or tricks for getting higher management to buy into one's ideas as a marketeer I think it's really building trust uh, and having a conversation on the same level. Um, I think, you know, trust comes uh, over time. um, But I think, you know, um, strong relationships with sales, with leadership are just really critical uh, to ultimately succeed as a marketer. Okay. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. And what about languages? Because oftentimes I feel like us marketeers, we speak in a marketing language that's not oftentimes understood across departments. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a very good question. And then again, um, other stakeholders may use a different language that marketing doesn't understand, right? Um, So I fully agree. You need to be aligned and you can only be aligned you know by uh, really speaking to each other attend each other's meetings you know uh, but I also really understand uh, the other you know uh, departments workflows and the way they work uh, in, in in order to really you know become become you, you know to build a bond and to really be, uh, become one team that understands each other and works hand in hand to ultimately make an impact. Okay. So to summarize this conversation, basically we are tasked with the job of understanding our audience and relating with our audience, right? So it's equally as important to also understand our team members across departments and relate to them according to their business objectives as well. I fully agree. And uh, you phrased that very nicely. I always uh, say that marketing is kind of the glue between departments, but also, you know, to the outside world, hence our clients and prospects. So yeah, I totally agree with uh, how you summarized it. Okay, excellent. Well, moving into Morningstar, just for our audience, FYI, what is it? 
30 second elevator pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so Morningstar is a company in the financial industry. We're uh, an independent research and uh, data provider. So um, alongside, so we're very well known in the industry for our fund ratings, uh, but we have a whole load of capabilities really in addition to our flagship software Morningstar Direct, which is an investment analysis platform. Uh, we have indexes products, managed portfolios, managed selection services, um, all sorts of research capabilities like uh, equity research, fund research, policy research, quantitative research. Um, and then what I'm particularly excited about, Morningstar did some major acquisitions over the last, let's say, five years. So um, a comp- we, we bought a company called DBRS. Uh, they uh, have credit ratings, um, a company called Pitchbook uh, that's uh, in the process of being integrated with private equity data, which is a wonderful addition to Morningstar's public data, uh, but then also Sustainalytics, uh, which have a whole load of capabilities around ESG research, ESG data, and uh, obviously sustainability, uh, sustainable investing is key in uh, 2020. Uh, and going forward, um, so having made this acquisition is just uh, wonderful, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, our clients are asset managers, uh, institutional investors, advisors, but all the products we develop and sell through um, those um, uh, uh, channels um, are made uh, to ultimately empower the individual, the end investor, uh, to reach his results. Okay, so it's a B2B2C company? Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I was snooping around on your LinkedIn profile and I saw <laughs> that you're big in content led demand generation. So I'd like you to define that for our audience before we dive further into that subject. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So um, demand generation for Morningstar's um, main products and services is really the main purpose of my role. Um, So um, obviously demand generation um, is uh, creating an interest uh, for, um, you know, products and services really. Not necessarily, you know, um, a a lead that is ready to buy, uh, but demand, right, and interest. And uh, doing that in a content-led way is uh, just Simply creating good content around your offering uh, uh, that attracts people to make them, you know, want to learn more about your capabilities rather than a pure product pitch, if that makes sense. Okay. So demand generation is literally creating a demand for a product or a service, but the audience doesn't necessarily know that they need that service or product just at that moment. And then leave exactly. you the next step, right? That's exactly it. And how you create a lead is really by, you know, bringing, creating this demand, bringing people into your ecosystem and then start actively nurturing them, uh, warming them up uh, to uh, uh, make them be interested in, uh, you know, considering a conversation with sales or taking a trial. Okay. So then Fabio, my next question would be the internet is full of channels, right? You can post your content anywhere and your audience could, audience could literally be anywhere. You don't really know where to find them. So how do you do it? How do you know where your potential leads are at any given point in time? That's such a wonderful question because I'm a strong believer in multi-channel marketing. Um, I really feel like, you know, you cannot be focused on, you know, uh, only advertising, on only, you know, uh, social media. It really needs the whole wheel of marketing. It really needs a multi-channel uh, driven marketing approach to really meet your customer wherever they may be. Um, so whether that is, you know, outbound emails to uh, existing contacts you may already have in your contact database, uh, whether that is uh, obviously a lot of focus on inbound marketing, advertising, social media, both organic, um, paid, um, SEO, uh, paid search. Um, I, I'm, I really strongly believe in a multi-channel marketing approach to ultimately meet your customer. Okay, excellent. So then let's put some of this theory into practical examples. Could you zoom into a demand generation campaign that you've led that just really exceeded all of your KPIs? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mentioned before uh, Morningstar's uh, flagship software. Uh, Morningstar Direct, uh, our investment analysis platform. So around this product, we really have a very industrialized um, uh, uh, approach in terms of how we generate leads, how 
we hand them to sales and how they follow up on them. Um, so this is all tracked, all measurable. So we can exactly see what leads were coming from marketing, what uh, from what source, how how and at what stage they went to sales, how they followed up and uh, whether they've then uh, 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 turned into an opportunity ultimately into revenue or whether they've uh, not been you know, warm enough and been pushed back to, to marketing for re-nurturing. And that whole approach is based on like three core tactics from a marketing perspective. Um, so again, multi-channel, uh, we have a monthly newsletter um, addressed uh, to wealth management and asset management very much leveraging the manager research, the fund research from our team of 350 analysts um, that we have at Morningstar. We uh, do a monthly webinar, um, a combination of, you know, high funnel, again, research-led content, uh, but also mid-funnel, a bit more product functionality-focused ones. And we create content guides. And you may wonder when I say we have 350 analysts producing content already, uh, why are you as a marketer creating content as well? Is there not enough out there? And yes, there is, but obviously that's very technical and more for a niche audience audience in the industry, let's say other analysts or, you know, product managers, portfolio managers, but with our content guides that we are creating, you know, we want to reach the wider audience, uh, maybe also, you know, the marketing manager at another asset manager, maybe the salesperson, um, whoever. Uh, may have an interest uh, uh, in that content. And then again, activating these guides with a multi-channel marketing campaign. And these three core tactics, hand in hand together, uh, lead of fantastic volumes of uh, marketing qualified leads, as we call them, that we are then handing to um, SDRs, as we call them, sales development representatives that are fully dedicated to follow up to follow up on uh, marketing qualified leads. And all this process, as I mentioned, uh, is trackable, uh, is measurable. We can exactly measure the impact we make in marketing, we make in sales, what leads to revenue. And that's outperformed. That program has outperformed over the last year. Um, so we're now in the process of cascading that to the rest of the EMEA region. And when I say that, I uh, have to mention that we usually experiment in the UK uh, just because it's one of the major markets uh, in Europe. Uh, and when things prove, start proving to work, we cascade to the rest of the region where we have uh, fewer marketing resources uh, so they can leverage uh, the stuff we do in London. So it's very, very, very much scalable, uh, the, whole, the whole lead generation approach. So again, very long-winded answer uh, to give you an answer to your question. Okay. One thing I am missing in that response are social networks. How can a B2B to C company leverage on the power of social networks to attract business to their company? Well, I think, you know, first of all, uh, I think uh, social channels are powerful because you have a certain following already, right? So um, uh, those people are uh, have actively followed you. They are uh, interested in your products and services. They want to learn more about you, right? So they kind of made the step to come into your ecosystem already um, and uh, well, hence they are engaged already. Um, and I think, you know, social media is such a powerful tool, especially for us in the financial industry, things like LinkedIn, where you can uh, target exactly the persona you're after uh, 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 in, in, the, in the field uh, of their expertise in their country, um, you know, um, it's just a wonderful and such a powerful tool. Um, so, um, yes, absolutely. Social media is key. Social media networks are key. But also what I have to what I have to put emphasis on is content is really king so the way you communicate to your future clients uh, the messages you push out there and i mean you know that and many marketers know that um you cannot communicate the same way uh, on all the social channels right you really have to target your message depending on the audience following you on a certain channel but yes very powerful tool i couldn't agree more mm -hmm. yeah content is only king if somebody's actually reading you right <laughs> totally totally <laughs> okay fun. again as i was skipping around on your linkedin profile i saw that you were recently promoted from emea marketing manager to emea senior marketing manager so fabio beyond a pay grade 
uh, or pay upgrade, excuse me, what other things have changed in your day-to-day role? Yeah. So funnily enough, there was not even so much of a pay upgrade thanks to the mm-hmm. pandemic. <laughs> but that left the side. Um, it's just a wonderful appreciation of the work and the success I could celebrate with uh, this company uh, in the past, right? Um, and I think um, you know it brings more. It brings more trust, um, more you know, uh, exposure maybe to senior leadership, uh, the opportunity to work on uh, more important, even more important projects, working even more globally, more internationally. I think it's, um, yeah, it's just, you know, a, a, a sign of trust between me, my manager, my team, which ultimately leads to, you know, uh, yeah, more, more, more new challenges. <laughs> okay, so exciting. Let me know if you need an assistant anytime soon, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Always need it. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's take a walk down memory lane. So let's say you could do it all over again. Would you still pursue a career in marketing? And if so, would you do anything differently now looking back on your experience? That's a great question. And to be, to give you a, a, a short answer for once, probably no, I wouldn't do anything different, really. I really love my, you know, international remit. I love marketing as such. I wouldn't want to do anything else. Um, you know, having worked in Europe's uh, largest financial hubs, uh, Zurich, uh, Frankfurt and London is what I absolutely love as well. So, you know, to answer your question, really, I wouldn't do anything different, really. It was just a wonderful journey uh, and I'm still on. So, um, yeah, more to come. <laughs> okay, beautifully put. And we're going to be moving into our set of rapid fire questions now, which are basically your recommendations for our audience. To get the section started off, I'd like to ask you about your source of inspiration. So, a professional role model or an influencer that you really admire. Yeah, so maybe that is the point when I uh, should mention that in addition to my uh, role of being uh, the senior marketing manager for me here at Morningstar, uh, I also drive our diversity, equity and inclusion program uh, for the EMEA region, which is uh, something I'm very passionate about. And I'm uh, uh, very, I feel very honored uh, that I can drive this program. And uh, with that said, um, there is a lady uh, in the UK uh, with a massive uh, track record uh, uh, in the financial industry. Beth Shah is her name. Uh, so she worked in the industry for years, has a massive network in the industry. She does a lot of consulting and networking, brings people together in the industry to learn how other companies out there you know, are approaching these topics, brings people together, makes people learn from each other, makes people share experience. How inspiring. Fabio, would you like to zoom into any of the activities that you're leading as part of the diversity and inclusion program at Morningstar? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, obviously we know uh, diversity is key, right? Uh, we we know that uh, um, companies uh, with more uh, diverse, uh, uh, with a more diverse workforce perform better. Uh, and, uh, better business outcomes. Uh, so it's absolutely a no-brainer that diversity is key and diversity goes hand in hand with uh, inclusion, right? You cannot grow a diverse workforce uh, if there is not an inclusive culture appreciating different backgrounds, different, um, you know, um, um, sexualities, different genders, uh, different uh, um, uh, um, types of colors. Um, so I being in that position of leading that program uh, leads to so many opportunities, really, you know, to speak to people, uh, to learn from, uh, you know, their challenges, uh, to uh, to see where people may have struggled, but also to learn, you know, where people had opportunities to shine due to the person they are. Um, so we are very much focused on um, gender equality. Uh, We know in the financial industry, uh, women uh, are still a minority, really. So that's definitely on the Morningstar um, agenda. LGBT is a huge topic for us. So we want to to make everyone feel comfortable to bring their whole selves to work, really. Then ethnicity, uh, which is a topic very close to my heart, uh, also given what uh, only just recently happened uh, uh, with Black Lives Matter in the US and all over the world. World, really uh, so that is a topic we're massively focused on but then also not to forget um, topics like disability 
age, nationalities. That's all part of diversity, really. So it's a huge, huge, huge uh, area uh, where every company in the financial industry has to improve. And uh, so has Morningstar. Mm. What a beautiful response, Fabio. And obviously, racism isn't only a problem that Americans face. It's worldwide. I totally agree. I totally agree. Okay. And now moving into our next question, what about a podcast or another resource that you'd like to recommend to our audience? Yeah. Um, funny you asking that. So, so uh, I never really listen to podcasts and don't ask me why, because it's such a wonderful world out there, which I've never really accessed. Um, but I did recently and I found a lovely one. So it's called the Content Jam. Uh hosted by two wonderful chaps, really, with, with a massive knowledge on content marketing, marketing in general, storytelling, all kind of things. And the way they, they host uh, uh, these podcasts is in such a funny um, but enriching and full of expertise way, um, sometimes a bit sarcastic, it makes you laugh, even though it's fully professional. That's definitely something I would recommend. And I promise I will listen to more podcasts going forward. <laughs> okay. And on that note, please tune into the content mix as well. <laughs> totally. Totally. 100%. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Fabio, we are coming towards the end of this interview. But before we wrap up, I'd like to ask you about your favorite app at the moment and why. Yeah, um, so um, might sound a bit boring, the answer I give you now, but um, during the pandemic, I was constantly on LinkedIn Learning. Um, for those um, that uh, uh, don't know LinkedIn Learning, it's a, it's a, it's a sub um, uh, program of LinkedIn uh, with wonderful training courses on all sorts of things, whether that is, you know, more uh, leisure focused, leisure time focused, whether that is more professional focused. Uh, you find uh, 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 obviously uh, uh, stuff around marketing courses, around marketing, how to drive a content marketing strategy, um, you know, how to create a lead gen strategy. You find you, um, uh, diversity and inclusion courses, really all sorts of things wonderful opportunity and the reason why I wanted to mention this now is because it wonderfully distracted me during the pandemic so um, definitely something I'd like to recommend. Okay excellent well Fabio thank you so much for joining us on the content mix it was awesome to meet you and to learn about your experience in marketing. It was an absolute pleasure and thank you so much for this great opportunity. <laughs> the pleasure has been mine and to everybody listening in today thanks for joining us on the content mix. For more perspectives on the content marketing industry in Europe, check out The Content Mix. We'll be releasing interviews just like this one every day, so keep on tuning in. Thanks again. Have a fabulous day, and see you next time. Bye.